Hey guys, my name is Irene and I'm a YouTube content manager for Template Monster. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about schema markup. Uh, what is schema markup and why it's so important in 2020? Uh, I'll tell you uh, about different kinds of schema markup and also if you're an owner of a WordPress website, I'll tell you more about how you can implement schema markup on your WordPress website and improve your Google rankings. Also, I'll tell you about schema markup plugins and show you how to use one of the most popular schema markup plugins. And uh, I'll tell you how to check if your schema markup is done right on your website. So tune in for more information and let's get started. WordPress is an SEO-friendly platform by default. Uh, not only does it provide pretty permalinks, but also it has content hierarchy that makes it easier for search engines to digest the information that you have on your website. SEO-friendly themes and WordPress plugins are used to extend the SEO capabilities of your website. With WordPress, you can create a customized SEO strategy to fit your needs. Why are we talking about schema markup in 2020? Uh, it's not secret that schema markup has been around for quite some time, and uh, it is sometimes called uh, the structured data or microdata. Uh, well, in 2020, uh, search engines become more about a uh, context, and uh, as the Google algorithm evolves, uh, it becomes uh, more context-centric. So it's important uh, for site owners uh, to let uh, the search engine know uh, what their content is about. And uh, with schema markup, your WordPress website can actually benefit in a few ways. Uh, for instance, to boost its search engine rankings as well as to boost its click-through rate and make a website more user-friendly. Uh, so, uh, schema markup uh, is added to specific parts of a website and uh, it provides more uh, context to the search engines uh, whenever the search crawlers are crawling your site to fetch some content. Uh, what exactly does schema do? Uh, this uh, context that schema markup indicates, uh, it helps to ensure that uh, the Google spiders or the Google bots that are crawling your website uh, list it uh, with more relevance uh, to a particular subject matter. Uh, so, uh, for instance, if uh, a person looks for a specific thing on the internet and uh, uh, they put in the search query for this specific thing and your website pops up, it means that uh, your website is more relevant to that very search query uh, than all of the rest, all of the competitors. If you've searched the web recently, then most likely you have already benefited from the types of information provided by the schema markup. To show you what it can do, let's enter a search query for schema reviews plugin WordPress as an example. Okay, so as I've entered my search query for schema reviews plugin WordPress, what I'm getting on top of my search results page uh, is the blog post which Google algorithm found the most relevant to my search query. Uh, this is how a featured snippets blog uh, looks like for a blog posts, and obviously this uh, exact blog post got here because uh, it has some schema markup going on, and uh, the Google algorithm uh, picked it. Uh, from this post to make uh, this list of uh, plugins which it thought would be relevant to my search queries. Uh, as we go down below, uh, we see uh, also other uh, WordPress plugins uh, that are relevant uh, to my search query, which is all-in-one schema rich snippets, uh, schema WordPress plugin, and uh, other blog posts which uh, list uh, similar schema plugins. Also, uh, at the bottom of the page, we have the related search block, which is also um, some sort of a, a featured snippets block, because the Google algorithm uh, picked from the context of my search query that uh, those must have WordPress plugins uh, may be interesting to me according to my search query. Uh, if I enter a different search query like schema WordPress plugin. Uh, I also get a list of WordPress plugins from WordPress.org. Uh, obviously, all of these uh, top three results, but 
it's sort of different, as you can see, and uh, I also get uh, the list of relevant schema plugins, uh, but uh, the rankings are slightly different. And so uh, I picked uh, the plugin schema and structure data for uh, WordPress and uh, AMP because, um, well, to me, it seemed uh, one of the most uh, comfortable to use and um, uh, it has over uh, 40,000 active installations. It's uh, updated often. It has nice ratings like... Uh, uh, 119 five stars ratings and obviously it supports a lot of uh, schema types so uh, you can see the list on the wordpress.org and this is not nearly all of the schema types that it supports so as uh, for instance we hit the link and uh, go to the website of schema and structure data, we can see uh, that it supports 16 schema types and so all of them are listed uh, on their website. So now I'm going to show you how exactly schema markup works for blog posts. Uh, for this reason, I've picked uh, Bookly and WordPress theme for hotels and B&Bs uh, from templatemonster.com and uh, I used it to make a test website. And so as you can see on the screen, uh, this is uh, what a test website looks like. I imported the demo data and now I can uh, use it to uh, show you how to install the schema markup and uh, how to implement it on uh, the particular blog post. So, um, as you can see, uh, this uh, WordPress theme has uh, quite a nice look and it has a booking feature on uh, uh, the website. And so all of these options, we go to the blog and uh, I've prepared a blog post for uh, the needs of this video. And here I inserted uh, the video uh, schema markup and now I'm going to show you how I did it. So uh, we go to the section plugins and we need to add a new plugin. Uh, I choose schema and uh, from all of these uh, schema plugins we have here, uh, as you can see quite a lot. Yeah, the list is quite enormous. Uh, so I'm choosing this one, Schema and Structure Data for WordPress and AMP, the one that I mentioned before. Um, you can see the brief overview of this plugin, uh, the supported schema types again. Um, and so uh, going back, we hit Install and Activate. Now we go back to the installed plugins. Uh, we see that our plugin is installed and now we can uh, set it up. Uh, as you can see, we go to the general settings and choose blog posting, but also there are plenty of other features. Um, and you can even install the add-on, which picks the ratings from different platforms. Also the advanced settings, premium features, services, and the support. So we go to our all posts and go to the post that I made beforehand. Uh, hit edit and now we see the video um, it goes under the uh, tour category on the website and here I've listed uh, the description for the video and uh, at the bottom of the page we have uh, this block with schema markup and so here I kind of uh, duplicated uh, all of the information uh, that is on the video page on YouTube here you can enter uh, lots of types of information, uh, the name of the video, the description, and so on and so forth. So now we're updating uh, this post and we're looking at the preview version of the post. Uh, as you can see, schema markup is not seen on your front end, so it's uh, only on the back end side of your website. To test it, we use Google Structured Data Testing Tool. So we enter the URL uh, of this particular post. And uh, yeah, here I'm going to fetch the URL because the, uh, the site is uh, for testing purposes. So the URL looks kind of ugly. Okay, uh, now I have the URL and uh, I'm running the test. So uh, this tool uh, shows the code with the markup itself. And actually this tool is used for validation. So um, 
If uh, you don't know how to check whether a website has the markup, here you can see it. And so uh, here I used the video object schema markup. And as you can see, all of the information that I've entered uh, for this particular blog post in the video uh, is reflected on the right hand side of the screen. So all of the info is listed and now uh, I only have one error for the missing logo URL. Um, so you can also paste the code snippet in here. That's like another feature of this tool. And actually that's how the video object markup looks like. If you don't know how to set up this particular plugin, you can go to the website uh, and it has a, a how to section with lots of different questions that uh, are answered in detail. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you uh, where you can get more information on the schema markup and your go-to resource to use uh, for the types of schema markups, like a reference website. So this is schema.org where you can find uh, lots of schemas. Um, and in this section, you will see the organization of schemas, the full hierarchy in the HTML and commonly used types of schemas. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of information listed here. And uh, what I'm interested in is the video object markup. So here are the properties used for a uh, video object markup. Uh, not too many, but still, and also other types of properties for media object, creative work type of markup, and also the type of markup called thing, which is a special type of markup. You can read more about it um, at schema.org. Uh, so next uh, comes uh, the microdata generator. Uh, and this is a tool uh, that you can use if you don't have a special plugin on your website for some reason, but you badly need to include the schema markup on your website. So here I've entered the information about the latest video we have on our YouTube channel, and that's how the script, um, the generated script, um, appears here on the right hand side of the window. And so you can copy it from uh, this window and paste into your uh, admin panel. And you can also use two kinds of tools uh, to validate. Uh, the first uh, is a Google structured data testing tool, which we've already used. And um, uh, with its help, you can validate uh, the script that you have for errors. Obviously, I have an error in the line 48, and this is um, the logo, the publisher's logo. The second uh, tool is the rich results tool, um, and it sort of emulates uh, how this code works on desktops and smartphones. So you can test this code. Uh, yeah, the capture. And uh, here uh, you can see uh, on the left uh, hand side the code input and on the right the test results, which again shows me the error that I'm having. And here it's uh, line 56. Yeah, the same. So the publisher's logo, I didn't include it. Well, that's what it looks like. You can also read about the issues on uh, Google Search Console help if uh, if there's any issue that's bothering you. So actually, that's it for the schema.org. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this has been interesting to you. And if you want more videos like this, leave the comment below in the comment section so that we can make more interesting videos for you. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have video updates every week. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.